A few months ago, while walking the dog around my apartment, I noticed this kind of giant asparagus-looking plant, and I got pretty excited. Why? Because it's yucca! Now, this yucca is not the other yucca, aka yucca with only one C, also known as cassava. It's a different one. Yucca grows wild in dry, deserty climates across Central and North America, as well as in gardens. It's used a lot in Mexican cooking. And you can identify it by its sharp, pointy, and fibrous leaves, and the flower stem's obvious similarity in looks to asparagus. When the flowers open, they're white and pretty odorless, with a texture of kind of like a layer of onion skin. The flowers are edible, but don't eat the stems or the roots unless you want a mouthful of soapy taste. They're full of saponins, which have been used to make foamy soaps and shampoos for thousands of years. The saponins are where the majority of the medicinal benefits of the plant are, though. They're good at lowering cholesterol and treating many other ailments. We'll show you what to do th with these in just a sec, but for now, take a look at this. Oregon Grape! Ripe Oregon grapes look a lot like a plant I covered a few episodes ago, Indian Plum. So here's how to tell them apart. Indian plums grow on a very tall bush, almost like a tree. They have a melony taste with a bitter finish and a hang down from the stems. Oregon grapes grow on what looks like a holly bush. They grow in clusters that stand out instead of sagging, and the berries are crazy tart, not melony at all. The leaves are waxy and have thorns on the tips, and from afar, they really look like holly. When you get up close, you can see the little blue-black grapes on a red stem. They're really easy to harvest by the handful, and it doesn't take long to get a lot of them. They grow all up and down the west coast from SoCal to Alaska, as well as in gardens across North America. They're high in vitamin C and packed with antioxidants, and medicinally they've been used for thousands of years to treat almost every ailment under the sun. And they're a potent laxative, so definitely eat them in moderation. It tastes like a warhead. So how do we use them? The berries are so tart I wouldn't eat them raw in any large quantity, but maybe kids might like them. But when you cook them, something magical happens. They transform into a bold, somewhat spicier version of a grape. Cook the berries with a few cups of water for three to five minutes and then strain them and drink it as is. It kind of tastes like pomegranate juice. Or add sugar and push them through a sieve or use a food mill if you have one, if you're lucky. And there you are, you have one of the best pancake syrups I've ever had. Alternatively, you can freeze it and you have a super, super easy sorbet. Mm. Oh, so good. Excellente. <laughs> Lastly, I take the seeds and the leftover sugary pulp and I put them in a jar with some terrible alcohol. Keep adding more pulp and more alcohol until it's full, and then shake it once a week for about five months and you'll be shocked at the delicious transformation. Ready for Christmas! And back to these lovely yuccas. Since the yucca season is relatively short, I wanted to keep some for later, so first I took a bunch and pickled it. Very easy and so worth it. Pickled. Next, Sean took some and fried it up with some eggs and a really good quality sourdough bread. As the flower heads cook, they turn a lovely shade of green and they take on the taste and texture of artichoke hearts. The flavor is mild enough to lend itself to all kinds of dishes and it goes really well with green onions. Our breakfast sandwiches were so good, we decided to add the yuccas into stir fry and even marinated some in garlic and olive oil and added them to a pizza. One of my Honduran friends asked me to save some for her famous yucca fritters, so stay tuned! This plant is very versatile. Nutritionally, it's a bit of a mystery. Some have said that the pistil, aka the center part of the flower, can be a bit bitter, but we had no issue with that and we just ate them whole with no issues to report. I definitely encourage you to experiment with these two wonderful plants. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you next week for our next episode. In the meantime, happy foraging!